Welcome back. It's uh, not only a terrific Tuesday, but it's a Table Talk Tuesday. And uh, Vito, you and I, just a few years back, right after President Trump was elected, we embarked on a little four-town tour where we went and sat down with regular folks. We sat at the table and we talked it through. And we looked into what were the measures, what were the causes of Trump winning. And uh, I think the young girl there, uh, we were at, uh, uh, that was Al D'Elia's house down in, uh, Vinny D'Elia down in uh, South Jersey. And uh, the young girl there, was, she was saying, I thought, about as good as anyone, that, uh, you know, he wasn't politically correct, he was saying new things, and uh, I think that was kind of what did it. We, we anticipated, I think that was the genesis of Table Talk, just what, what really happened, right? And, and what most people take for granted, the professional pollsters, all the pundits who got all the uh, things wrong. What they, I think they overlooked was what people just talk about and think about as a sitting around their own kitchen table, hence the name Table Talk, and, and going into people's homes that support it, some, whom, some who did not, right, and just hear them out as to what's important to them, unfiltered, uh, in, in a very concrete sort of way, so people years from now will try to understand what really happened. Now, I, I don't think, John, we anticipated at that time the, the uh, total carnage that was going to be on the side of the road because of that election, because 62, 63 million people supported the president. But I thought it was healthy, uh, I believe you agree, healthy to have people just sort of share in their own wor words what happened. And you're right, that young lady was, was articulate. She, felt she has entitled to her opinion and beliefs. And that's sort of the sidebar to all of this. It's as if... People who supported the, the president, for whatever reason, are not entitled to those opinions. No. They want to take them away. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, you got, you got people out there like Maxine Waters who is making statements saying that, you know, if you're a Trump supporter, you're a scumbag. That's what she actually said. Trump supporters, these people are nothing but scumbags. And that's just not the president. She's talking about if you follow this guy. Yeah. Um, and we talked about... On Table Talk, going back three years ago, about how intolerant the left seemed. And that was like just a little snippet of like, that was between the election and the inauguration when we went out there. Man. And we were already seeing that, you know, the left is tolerant right up until the minute they don't get their way. And I think it's gotten worse from that. You know? I, I believe so. And it was the first, um, and it was an eye opener to me during the election that leading up to it, which led to just a little foray into table talk, but it was the first time in my experience, and I've been around politics a little bit, campaigns for, for decades, uh -huh. it was the first time that, um, that I saw people started going after the supporters of the candidate. Not just the candidate himself or the candidate herself, but the people who supported. I thought it was just really bizarre. Uh, and it was unprecedented. And, John, you know a lot of folks. Uh, we have a lot of similar friends and contacts. They're good people. They work hard. Nobody ever gave them a darn thing. They're out of the house at 6 o'clock in the morning, sometimes seven days a week, working. Some of them work in two or three jobs. And, you know, when you see people like that support somebody or beliefs, you know, they, above all, are entitled to their opinion. And you're right. It's as if, that's what I said at the, at the very beginning of, with the results of that election, on that night in November, whether you like it or not, be a, a g gracious loser and, and beat them at the ballot box. Come back and take back seats in the House or the Senate. Set up a good campaign for 2020. Do whatever you need to do. But don't try to undo the election and repudiate uh, the results of the Amer American people and our system of government. Yeah, you know, you mentioned it before that, you know, one of the ways that I try to give back to the community is coaching high school football, Little League baseball, and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. But you and I both, we were raised on sports fields and, and team sports and stuff. And the one thing you learned from when you were like seven years old, no matter how much you hated your opponent during the game, yep. you fought it out, you put your thumb in their eye when they were down maybe during the game, you, it, was a, it, was a, it was a brawl. Um, but no matter what, win or lose, you line up, and you shake hands with the other team, and you come back, try to make a new plan, and beat them the next time. But there's no, there's, that doesn't exist. Like, you try to teach kids from when they're young not to be sore losers and not to be sore winners. But the one thing is, at the end of the game, you tell the kids on your team, line up and shake their hands. Right, and if you don't see, in that, in that case, if you don't see kids do that, if you see a coach walk off the field with that for no reason, you, you take a step back and say, 
you know, what's that all about, right? Now we've taken it to a whole nother, whole nother level uh, at the national level with this situation. And what you saw, as an example, once one example was the Brett Kavanaugh hearings last, right. last year, right? You saw it in plain view of people just coming forward, which is why I think you need to sort of go slow on this current impeachment drama, is there were people who made all these accusations. They were lobbing grenades at this guy, destroying him, destroying his family, making all the... And it all became, it was unfounded. So they were willing to do that, and the American people saw it in plain view. And let's fast forward to right now. Here we are, October of, of, of 2019, based on some anonymous person who didn't have firsthand knowledge of a situation. And if you read the transcript, one thing that stood out to me was the person said in different ways, multiple officials told him. Some officials told him. Some White House officials told him. It, it was as if there was this narrative that was created uh, in advance, and then they had to back into it. So I, I, don't, I don't get it. Um, I think there are a lot more important things going on in this world than, than just this right now. Uh, I think people are going to work every day, school's back. Uh, we have issues around the world that demand our attention so that we can continue to live in peace and prosperity. And yet there's, a, I think, an unbridled focus on, on something that just seem, doesn't seem right to me. So, and, and on top of, we're talking about intolerance and, you know, shaking hands at the end of the game, not being a sore loser. Um, but now we're at a point, we had this guy Andy to go on. He's an independent journalist and he's out there covering, you know, one of these Antifa protests. And they're not just shouting at him and, you know, expressing their First Amendment right. They gave the guy a beating. Yeah. They smashed him over the head with a rock. They were throwing cement in his eyes. It's like the intolerance has gone from words to actual violence now, and you don't hear a word about it on the left. No, there is, and people may say, hey, this is it's gonna sound nuts, but the reality is the, the, the Marxists and the, the communists, and whether it be in the um, Bolshevik revolution or, or in, Ch in China, that was what they did. They destroy the opposition by shaming them, beating them, public tortures. You know, read, read history of what, what these uh, the dictators, communist dictators did. That's what they do. They can't win the argument. They can't win at the ballot box. So what do they try to do? They destroy, they destroy the opposition, literally, almost like in a public torture. And, uh, and I think that, that has a lot of backlash against people who were just trying to do the right thing or were trying to walk, try to look at politics through an independent prism and say, okay, who's the best person? Who's got the best ideas? And then along comes a mob to destroy somebody who, who has their own opinion, which is, uh, which is downright scary. It sure is. And uh, Vito, there's a lot of scary things going on out there. And uh, I know one of the top issues facing, you know, the presidential candidates this year is going to be health care. Um, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to get into all the efforts you and your family do um, to help with the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. There's a big walk coming up uh, this weekend. Correct. Um, but let's talk about it. We're going to take a quick break. He and I are going to be unhealthy. We're going to load up on cholesterol, carbs, and all that good stuff. Take a quick break on Liquid Lunch and back at you right after this. <laughs> 